So hello everyone, thank you for giving me the opportunity to do the presentation today. And I am Han and, and I'm a student, I'm a PhD student uh, of Cynthia, Cici and Johnson. And in today's presentation, I will show you something about my research and it is mainly about how to uh, contract 3D tree models from point cloud and these tree models are supposed to uh, to to support urban microclimate simulation and uh, maybe say by the building energy use model. So I have done a literature review recently and uh, I will show you some findings and the conclusions and maybe then we can have a discussion on my research. So let's begin. The topic of my presentation today is 3D urban tree modeling from point cloud for urban microclimate simulation. And uh, let's first have a brief look at the research background. And this research is motivated by the serious environment issue and the increasing urban carbon emissions. And urban carbon emissions have been one of the sustainable development challenges. And it brings a lot of severe effects like uh, the negative climate change and uh, it makes citizens suffering from poor living conditions. And many countries have de developed uh, strategies to offset urban carbon emissions, and it's a great expense. Here I have listed, um, I have listed the uh, exact dollar uh, dollar amount invested by Australia and China. So we can see that the money invested in reducing carbon emissions is all, all often in the hundreds of millions. And in urban areas, the energy use of buildings is one of the main contributors to urban carbon emissions. And the energy of, and the energy use of um, buildings can be influenced by urban microclimate significantly. And uh, uh, um, the is the essentially uniform local climate um, of a usually small site or habitat. Um, uh, it is a prop, uh, about 10 to 1,000 kilometers in horizontal extent. So if you want to offset urban carbon emissions, it is important to consider the role of urban meditation into, uh, in the urban planning. And in this decade, some new concepts have been proposed, such as smart city and digital twin. Uh, and these concepts suggest the application of computer science uh, in the sustainable urban planning. Uh, in this scenario, the corresponding virtual digital representation of real urban, uh, uh, urban objects are desired for the possible numerical simulation. So now let's see, uh, uh, particularly in my research, I mean, I mainly focus on the explosion of the construction of tree, urban trees. So okay, now let's see how um, current urban microclimate simulations are done. Usually there are two kinds of approach. Uh, the first one is urban canopy model, abbreviated as UCMs. And UCMs simplify the urban form as the urban canyon and the associated microclimate process in numerous ways related to their neighborhoods. And in this kind of method, trees are always represented with simple shapes like we can see in the uh, left uh, left figure, and um, say the trees are represented as circular shapes in the cross in the cross section plane, and uh, these models may have several parameters like uh, leaf area density and the uh, trees height, crown diameter, and a uh, few factors. However, these parameters are usually uh, empirical values. I mean, they set these parameters according to the previous studies. Uh, and according to the experience, experience, and the some in some studies, they may measure these parameters with uh, some equipment or instruments. But you know, the field measurement is always labor consuming and time consuming. And uh, and, uh, and the other method is computational fluid dynamics models. Uh, we call it a CFD models. CFD models are commonly used to evaluate the urban microclimate based on trees evaporation, aerodynamic performances, and the shadow effect. And in this kind of method, and the right in the right picture, 
um, trees are trees are generally seen as porous mediums, and these models are attached with parameters that can be used in standard fluid flow equations. So here are two examples of tree models used in CFD models. The right one uses tree models represented with 3D work group. 3D grades, and these models are actually the template, but these models are actually the templates of trees which are preset by the developers of the software, and they do not necessarily represent the real trees, they are just the templates. And the left one use, use simple polyhedras to represent the trees simply, but this kind of representation, representation of trees is kind of overly simplified and it does not it does not describe a tree's crown of lords. So so we can conclude that the current microclimate simulations use hypothetical tree models. I mean these models do not necessarily uh, represent the real trees and they give the and they give these trees tree models simplified geometries empirical physiological characteristics and uh, even sometimes even assumed vocations. So I have thought if we can reconstruct tree models from point clouds and if these models can provide the real parameters needed in, uh, in such simulation, we might make some contributions. To do this, I first investigated what factors should be included and consider it when we constructing tree when we consider consider trees impact on urban microclimate. So I searched for general papers which explore the trees impact on urban microclimate, and uh, I and I, no matter what kind of uh, method they used to do the research, I mean they may use some numerical simulations as I just uh, introduced, or they may measure the real and they may measure the real microclimate data by some sensors. All these uh, papers I I searched them, I searched for them and uh, summarized the, the uh, factors. Here I classified them into three groups um, called geometric fu geometric features, uh, physiological characteristics, and tree location and the surrounding factors. The geometric features is mainly about the tree's 3D structure and the chroma plot, and the physiological characteristics can be divided further into crown level physiological characteristics and the leaf level physiological characteristics. And for in crown level physiological characteristics, I we have foliage distribution and the tree spatials, and in leaf level one we have leaf type transpiration rate, stomatal conduct, conductance, and the leaf optical traits. And, uh, and the last one is location of the surrounding factors. It is about how to describe a tree's interactions with the surroundings. Usually con uh, contains tree locations, planting patterns, and uh, some information about uh, the background uh, and other urban objects like soil, pavements, and the nearby buildings, nearby uh, water bodies. So, and the current tree reconstruction approach um, mainly focus on the geometric features of trees, and they really focus on physiological characteristics. And uh, usually, they do see do see see research this research at the level of single individual tree. So they do not always consider. Uh, they do not often consider the um, other. Uh, urban objects like buildings or humans, something like that. So they really they can hardly consider uh, they hardly consider the surrounding factors of trees. So there may be some challenges in integrating tree models into a city model. Yeah, and uh, and I will introduce some um, uh, three mainstream approaches um, to reconstruct tree uh, tree models from point clouds. Um, for the sake of convenience, we call it a type 1, type 2, and a type 3 approach. The type 1 is to use geometric shapes to delineate the crown surface of trees, and type 2 is to reconstruct trees with voxels, and type 3 is to reconstruct the skeletons of trees and then adding leaves uh, configurations. Well, voxel here, voxel in type 2 approach can be seen as the 3D 
extension of 2D grids, uh, and uh, they are 3D matrix of cubic volume elements. And the skeleton of tree uh, of trees mentioned in type 3 method uh, approach um, means the branches and the main trunk of trees. So let's first see type 1 approach. Type 1 approach focus on the crown shape of trees and delineate the crown surfaces um, with simple geometric, uh, not, maybe not very simple, with uh, geometric shapes. Uh, in this kind of approach, the outline and the shape of the crown uh, are the most important features. And the common shapes used in this approach include alpha shapes that we see now, and the convex hole, and sometimes concurve holes. So type one approach produce, uh, produces a highly compact 3D models of trees. And, it, uh, and these models delineate the shape of crowns. It is very simple, and uh, so, it take, uh, so it takes just uh, small memory spaces and the and the such simple representation of geometric shapes makes uh, this approach possible to generate lightweight 3D tree models, and it can um, it can complete the process rapidly and efficiently. Also, this kind of representation is highly simplified, but some external uh, geometric features of crowns can be obtained. For example, like tree height and the crown width, the crown base height, and uh, something like that, they can be estimated by this kind of uh, approach. Uh, also with some uh, with some error, but the error is usually acceptable because you see it is very simple approach. So um, besides this approach, uh, besides it is possible to reconstruct trees from low quality point clouds because this approach is uh, not very sensitive to noise. And uh, it is very suitable for uh, simple for relative simple tree architectures like broadleaf trees. And uh, on the other hand, the, uh, this approach also has, uh, also has some disadvantages. First, it is structure low accurate and uh, it lacks, uh, it lacks uh, details of foliage distribution inside the crowns. When we try to reconstruct such a simple shape, to represent tree crowns, we have to traverse on all the points, and to reduce computational time, the normal way is to uh, is to is to date the points inside of the crowns before we process the uh, process the point clouds. So consequently, it cannot represent the gaps or or any uh, in crown information compared with the other two approaches. So, um, so the internal information and the details of in those structure of crowns are always lost or always simplified. And now let's uh, see type two approach. And uh, type two approach converts point clouds into voxel spaces. So it can also be called a voxel based approach. And it addresses the 3D structure of crowns with voxels. And each voxel can be assigned with a value according to the number of points in the voxel or according to the intensity of return laser beam. And the voxel value is a powerful index to identify the objects. We can, according to the voxel value, we can identify it, uh, it is a crown or it is just noise. So it is very convenient to delete, to delete the noise in the point cloud. And in source, um, Voxels, the crown points are identified and then assembled into a crown model. And uh, the, uh, the voxel based approach is uh, a convenient and uh, efficient way to describe uh, spatial foliage distribution. And it makes the reconstruction possible to be completed within minutes. And uh, <clears throat> it also allows the uh, it can also ignore the empty voxels and remove of voxels potentially arising from noise. And for example, if the voxel value is very, very low, we can uh, identify this voxel as empty or, or arise from 
uh, noise, so we can uh, we can remove it quickly. And the type two uh, compared with type one approach, the type two approach preserves more details of Chrome and the inside Chrome. And the air gaps and the Fourier distribution are retained during the reconstruction. And uh, um, furthermore, the workflow like the three models also provides a concise but informative represent representation of trees. Uh, this kind of models have been have been proved to uh, have been applied successfully in simulating the reflectance of canopies and uh, um, and the in you know in this research they also consider the voxel based voxelized tree models is the most operational representation um, due to its low computational pressure and the uh, type two um, approach may generate less structure precise tree models um, compared with type 3 approach. But more importantly, the reconstruction result, uh, results depend on the uh, voxel size. Larger voxel size can reduce, um, um, larger voxel size, uh, voxel size can, uh, larger voxels can reduce the influence of occlusions since points and the nearby missing points, uh, which are not scanned, can be consulted consolidated into one voxel. And by contrast, small voxels can produce more accurate and uh, architectural independent model, but the determin uh, so the de determination of, of voxel size should be balanced uh, to um, should be balanced to get the best uh, best result. And the type three approach is the most complex one. It first Reconstruct uh, it first reconstructs the skeletons of trees and then add and then add some leaf entities. There are two methods used to reconstruct the tree skeletons. The first one uh, uses cylinders to fit the trunk, like we see now, and the branches. Uh, use cylinders to fit the trunk and and the branches, and uh, the reconstructed reconstructed model are usually called quantitative structure model uh, called QSMs. And uh, in QSMs, the woody components uh, are topologically and hierarchically ordered and uh, repre represented is a broad set of cylinders. In this method, uh, first point clouds are divided into um, uh, a bunch of cover sets. It, it, it is like a clustering process. They are clustered into uh, a bunch of cover sets, and for each set, the external normal vector, principal um, curvatures, and the principal directions, and some parameters like that may be calculated. And then a cylinder is used to fit each part of trunk and the branch. And then they connect all the, all the cylinders together to get the skeleton. And the second method reconstructs uh, tree skeletons with graph salaries. Uh, this method is based on the geodesic graph, uh, graphs built uh, by connecting and clustering points in the point clouds. So at first, point clouds are clustered and divided into, uh, into several undirected graphs. And the two adjacent gra graphs are connected by linking the nearest uh, points in them, and uh, uh, for example, and, and then we can see scattered points. Here I gave an example, maybe it is not very scattered, but it, it can be seen as an example. So this, uh, the first one, A, these, are, these are scattered points in the point clouds, and uh, for now they do not have connection, connect, uh, connect relation, and then According to the graph theory, these points are connected. Um, we can see in B, uh, in picture B, each each point are called each point is called a, a node, and the distance between them are called edge. Then we, according to the theory, uh, graph theory, we can connect these points. Usually, according to the, uh, usually we we connect these points 
in the way that makes the distance from the point to the root root node is the sh shortest. Usually, according to different uh, salary, we can we, we may have different connection ways. So finally, we can see the result is like in the picture D. So no matter which method is used to reconstruct a skeleton of trees, uh, type 3 approach is very sensitive to noise, and it has a strict requirement on, on, on the quality of point clouds. So uh, it needs a satisfactory denoising procedure. If it cannot be conduct, uh, conducted automatically, sometimes it, this noise has, have to be the noise has to be removed manually, so it, it takes a lot of time. And besides to get the clear branch structure, the reconstruction of skeletons is usually conducted on the point clouds scanned when the trees are uh, leafless or leaf off. So type tree is not is less adoptable when reconstructing evergreen trees. All right. And for QSMs, the parameters need to be predefined manually for tree reconstruction. For example, when we um, cluster, cluster the points into, into different uh, uh, cover sets, into several cover sets, we have to give us uh, particularly, particularly the, the cover set diameter. Uh, and the set parameter can influence the final result uh, greatly. For example, yeah, um, the right picture is, uh, is with, uh, has a cover set diameter of two centimeters and the left one has uh, has diameter of 10 centimeters. So the result will be totally different. So they are, so this approach is very sensitive to the parameters you know, um, the user set. And the addition of leaves can be very complex and it really relies on the external study on physiological salary of trees architecture. Um, these, these tree, uh, these, the leaf models are usually predefined according to the leaf structure model is templates. And uh, it makes the reconstruction approach specific to certain tree species and to certain leaf type. And sometimes um, the creature of leaf templates needs human interventions to set parameters like the leaf length, leaf shape, leaf size, and uh, leaf, uh, leaf, leaf, leaf size distribution and the leaf orientation distribution, something like that. And the set of these parameters uh, are similarly based on the experiment of artificial survey or extra effort of scanning the leaves for shear shapes uh, with refined digital instruments. Um, however, such kind of assumption of leaf type may introduce some errors in tree reconstruction. And uh, it is very it is a very complex process, so it may cause um, it, it increases the memory space and it can be more computationally uh, demanding. And through all these efforts, type 3 approach is able to produce uh, visually impressive explicit models with high structure accuracy. And the three models reconstructed with leaf entities and the detailed branching structure can be applied in many applications. For example, as far as I know, these kind of models have been, uh, have been applied in radiative transfer modeling. And uh, due to the detailed branching structure, uh, type 3 approach um, gains advantages in retrieving physiological characteristics of trees. Um, for instance, um, uh, according to one study, the models uh, constructed in, by type 3 approach perform better in estimating the tra transpiration rate of trees than those reconstructed by uh, type 1 and type 2 approaches. So now let's look back to the requirements of uh, of tree reconstruction. For geometric futures, um, almost uh, all these three approaches can 
get the geometric features, just with some differences in the accuracy. And so, and it's for physiological characteristics, and the leaf level characteristics are too detailed, so it will cost too much in retrieving some from point clouds. So I think it is maybe better to infer some from tree species. And the tree species can be retrieved from imaginary information. It is much beneficial and it is much convenient from uh, to retrieve some from imaginary information and from the point cloud. And to, to get the surrounding factors, uh, the tree model should be integrated into a city model. And uh, the data source should be able to cover a large range of areas. So therefore, the uh, air, airborne laser scanning and the mobile laser scanning are more suitable than terrestrial laser scanning. And the reconstruction approach should be computationally. Therefore, type 1 and type 2 approach gain the priority compared with Type three. So now the question is how to get the uh, how to get the foliage distribution. And the recently I'm thinking about uh, maybe we can also add the leaf optical traits to the um, to the tree models from like uh, with the with the data we got from the light uh, point cloud. So, but I haven't taken deep in this aspect. So let's just let's first see. Uh, how to get the forage distribution. Uh, in my literature review, I found two, uh, two mathematical indices to describe 3D forage distribution. They are uh, leaf area density, uh, abbreviated as LAD, uh, and uh, also leaf area index, LAI. So LAD is the total one-sided leaf area of photosynthetic tissue per unit canopy volume, and the LAD is, is integrated along the height, which donates to the uh, which donates the total single side leaf area per unit ground horizontal surface area. Okay, and I found that in three papers, they use they use voxelized they voxelized the point cloud to uh, estimate the LAD and LAI. And uh, in one paper, they use uh, they they estimated the LAD and LAI according to the uh, tree height and the, the diameter of breast height of trees. But it is just seen in one paper, so we can just ignore it. And the uh, and the other one is all the matrix statistics. I will introduce these two methods briefly. Um, the voxel, the voxel, the vocalizing, the voxel, vocalize, vocal, vocalizing the point cloud is, um, is a popular method in estimation of LAD and LAI. And uh, this, uh, usually, and this, 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 this method can also be seen in other uh, researchers, which is not, uh, which is not about tree reconstruction. And the, the uh, in this method, the, the light point clouds of trees are usually put into voxel spaces, like we just improve, uh, introduced, and then the LAD and AI is estimated from the information of each voxel, uh, such as the number of laser beams entering, hitting, and the passing through in each voxel, and also they will consider the attenuation of laser beam, and uh, the allometric static statistics, it means to collect the samples of branches and leaves and find the relationship between leaf area and uh, with the biological parameters of branches, like branches length, branches relative height along the tree, or the position of branches. Therefore, the leaf area can be inferred by the biological parameters of branches. As you see in type C method uh, approach, the branches, the branching structure is always available, so so the leaf area can be inferred, and then the leaves can be added. Uh, however, the leaf configuration is um, is pretty fine, as such as leaf uh, leaf size orientation and the distribution pattern, and the larger samples of leaves are needed to conduct the, the allometric statistics. So the comparison between the between the allometric statistics, uh, 
uh, well, the compar the comparison between the allometric statistics and the uh, and the, the voxelizing the point voxelizing point clouds um, is still needed to analyze this which one is better. But in my research, I think voxelizing point cloud is recommended because it uh, saves computational effort. It is not like it is not so time and time consuming and labor consuming. Besides, uh, voxel uh, voxel as the point cloud is also um, a step uh, in tree reconstruction, so they can be combined together. So, oh, uh, so that is what I'm going to do in my research. First, I want to reconstruct the tree models from LIDAR and the photo grid, um, so that we can reconstruct the tree models of real trees in voxels, and then I want to integrate these also tree models into the city model, uh, not only store their basic, their basic geometry and, uh, and, uh, and the location, but also their physiological characteristics. And then based on the integrated city model to do some simulations about the urban microclimate and uh, maybe, uh, maybe first of all, the building energy use. So this is the proposed approach. Uh, the workflow. First, from LiDAR, we, uh, we got uh, 3D point cloud and uh, we, we improved the workflow-based approach to, uh, to get the LAD and the LAI and also the geometric features to get, and, and to get the 3D, uh, yeah, to get the 3D di di digital tree model. And uh, from photography, um, we can get imaginary information of trees and uh, we can get tree spatials from imaginary information and, uh, and infer some leaf level physiological characteristics and that attach these, these parameters to the 3D digital models to make it comprehensive and then integrate these models into the city model and uh, oh, sorry, so maybe some missed. and uh, then we can do the simulation based on them. And uh, for the workflow-based approach, there may be some improvement. First is the uh, incomplete, incomplete and uh, unstable quality of point clouds. Because you see, we have to use, because we have to uh, reconstruct the trees in uh, in a relative large space, like a campus or a neighborhood. So we have to use a mobile laser scanning and airborne laser scanning. So the point clouds we get may have some missing regions, in like uh, at the lower part of trees and the back side of the trees. And another thing is the optimization of voxel size. It is always a problem in voxel-based approach. So uh, one is, uh, Andy Ricotti has said that the voxel size may influence the final, may influence the final reconstruction and the uh, uh, final tree models may influence the accuracy of final tree models. Another thing is that the voxel size suitable for LAD and AI estimation may be different from source that suitable for tree reconstruction. So this may, so we may need to optimize the voxel size to balance both sides. And uh, that's all I think. Thank you for your listening. Great. Thank you very much, Han. That's um, a brilliant uh, presentation. Really interesting looking at those different, the different ways of modeling and um, quantifying such a, a difficult thing to capture, like a tree. <laughs> it's a really very good presentation. Excellent. Congratulations, Han. You're ready for your. Um, uh, progress review. <laughs> I have only a small comment when you are saying that you are going to integrate um, trees into the city model. Actually, it's city model is supposed to have the trees, you know, so yeah. um, city model supposed to contain also the trees. So probably it's better to say that you want to have a city model including the trees oh. or to you know reconstruct the uh, trees within a city model something like that but 
when you say integrate the trees into the city model, somehow comes the question, what is the city model? <laughs> <laughs> so we have to integrate it with the trees. <laughs> this is a small comment, but the presentation is really wonderful. Thank so uh, really very, um, a very good review on all this paper for trees reconstruction. The paper is published. Did you put the link somewhere in the? Yeah, in the email. In the email was the link. Okay. Yeah. So if everybody wants to uh, see which papers you found and you reviewed, can go to the paper. Now we have time for questions. Even you plan it very well, so we have. Uh, yeah, we can discuss something. Yeah. Uh, hello, hi. Uh, okay. Cynthia, you must be proud of him. <laughs> yeah, uh, he is doing well. Um, yeah, he is. Uh, he has done some extensive literature review on trees modeling. I think we we recently actually found out there's another use case for his tree modeling for some other researchers. Um, but um, since I actually want to follow up you, uh, what you mentioned in the city model. Um, so you mentioned in the city model that already we have some tree models in it. I think Hans um, review um, found out in this city models, the trees are all hypothetic. So the, they all have the same kind of look and size, or it's just when people um, Establish the city model, the, the more focus on the buildings, and then they just add randomly add some uh, tree in along the street or in the in the space that the people usually think the, they're supposed to have some trees. Is that the case? So uh, I guess that's that will help Hans justify whether whether it's necessary then we do the straight laser scanning and then add the realistic trees in the city model. So it's not now it's from the designers or the hypothetic trees, the location or the the shape, the size or, and the species are, are more accurate. So mm. that, I think that's his point. Um, yeah, I understand what he wants to say, but just from a modeling point of view, when you say city model, mm. um, the city model is supposed to have uh, information also about trees, trees, not only about buildings. So this is the concept. And it's, of course, another point how everything is represented because the buildings, uh, most of the city models contain very simplified buildings. This doesn't mean then mm -hmm. when you um, have a more detailed building or more realistic building, again, we have to say that we integrate the building into the city model. So this is just uh, how to say it's oh, yeah, um, yeah I understand. it's just to make the I, yeah I understand you, your the the way you corrected uh, the the way he expressed it but my question is actually is that in the current research or in the current situation most of the city models actually have the simplified trees the, yeah the, that's true that that that's the case yeah All right. that's the case that's the case because. Um, yeah, because of many reasons, because the trees are used for different modeled for different kind of applications. If it is for uh, urban planning and you want to see how uh, this uh, area is going to look after, let's say, uh, 20 years, then you just can place some kind of random trees, something like conifer trees that something just with to represent the shape. So okay. it's not for analysis. What he does is really for analysis. Yeah. And it's very important to be able to model the trees much more uh, realistic, realistically, to have um, the porosity in the trees, to have also the, these different shapes, because not all the trees are round and, you know, uh, have specific shape. And many of them are exactly what he has on, on the real trees exactly have uh, arbitrary shape. So if you want to really compute something related to CO2 or to the foliage or to the greenery, yeah, you have to have the real tree. 
otherwise it's just estimation. Mm. It's correct, yeah. Is there, is there any e efficient or quick, easy way to uh, replace the hypothetical trees in the current city model with uh, more realistic trees from the laser scanning? Um, I think that's related to what Harry yeah. is going to do next step. Yeah, and yeah. We are not yeah. so sure what kind of application and then can can help him to quickly set up this. Yeah. In a way, um, actually, the trees, the uh, location of the trunk of the tree, uh, it exists as a data set. And it's given only as a point. So when he reconstructs the trees with the accurate shape, he can replace the point with the more accurate geometry. So that that's that's not an issue and he can do it. Yeah, in depends in what kind of software he has the the rest of the the model, the buildings and the terrain. Can he can do it in Grasshopper, in Unity, in whatever he decides. In Cesium. Uh, but uh, it is possible to replace them very quickly. And also if the, the whole model, the whole city model is organized in a database management system, so somewhere this information is stored, it's also very easy to uh, add the trees in the database. Okay, that, that's good, yeah. Mm. As a you should take this opportunity to ask further questions so you can get some good information for your next step research. Yeah. Um, we, we also discussed the size of the, the work cells and how accurate it should be, so it will affect the, the microclimate actually. Because mm. in, in some cases we probably don't need to have that accuracy because we all we want is to, if we just want to analyze the, the microclimate. Um, but in another use case, um, Sissy, you know that we for the for the um, power lines that's actually mm. with more accuracy because we want to know exactly the location of the the branches. So I guess um, we were thinking that next step, or uh, I think, um, Han, have you explored some somehow uh, how we could you utilize some laser scanning data to convert to work so and then to experiment the the accuracy or the size of the the work cells? Well, I haven't explored it very deep. Um, I know that uh, there may be some uh, recommended value of work source size to recommend the size of work source to do that, but I think it really depends on the cases. I mean, it, I mean, if even if we choose a uh, choose a voxel, maybe this voxel can be uh, can be uh, is is suitable in this area, but maybe it is not suitable in the other one. So, yeah, it I think it depends on the cases we uh, on the on the location we decided to do our case study. So, mm -hmm, exactly. And it's yeah. uh, interesting to make some experiments and to see how this is going to influence the. Uh, I don't know what exactly for this for the um, power lines. I don't know what the regulations are. There is some, I guess, buffers that the trees should be away from the power lines. And um, yeah, the voxel size can be adapted to this buffer size. So if, for example, it's something like a meter, you can go probably to 20 centimeters voxels. Um, if it is smaller, go to 50 centimeters. Probably you can also go to smaller voxels like 10 centimeters. So this is still a research. <laughs> it should be investigated. If somebody from the group here has some experience with modeling um, trees, Kind of. <laughs> yeah, what well, did you I, do? What I did, well, what I was looking for, uh, for example, I will talk in terms of, uh, for example, a country, in this case, uh, Canada and uh, Mexico also, which is my case. As you say, there are some regulations. 
regarding the distance between um, the tree or the top of the tree or whatever part of the tree to the power lines. So, but uh, I mean, I think in terms of uh, tree management, because that will be more the term related to this safe distance, Canada is better. It's a better starting place to look for this information, but, but yeah, again, it's a research area how to properly use which models, but that's what I can say so far in terms of the shape of the trees and the distance to, to power utilities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Mitko, uh, in, is Mitko here, by the way? Yeah, yes. Ah, Mitko. And because we are considering modeling of trees also for the, um, the other, for the lightest project and for the brick proposal uh, project. Uh, so what do you think about the, 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 the <laughs> size of the voxels? We voxelized some part of our campus and it was 20 centimeters, the size of the voxelized trees. And uh, Mitko has played a lot with these uh, voxels. So what is your opinion or a vision? How do you see it, Mitko? I mean, it, it depends definitely uh, on, on the applications that you want to do after that with, with the voxels. Uh, the thing is, um, you need to probably do some analysis and see if the day, if the results are changing uh, like drastically with uh, with the size of the voxel, uh, and if this is the case, probably you need to go with smaller. Uh, but at the same time, maybe you need to think about some validation ways to kind of identify uh, if a certain voxel. Uh, size is making uh, or like is giving some approximate results to maybe more uh, advanced or more uh, complicated, uh, more complex uh, methods. Maybe you can validate on some 3D models or like, I don't know, maybe you can find some data which is uh, for which you know the results and kind of uh, try to uh, play with uh, the voxel size and see uh, what fits a bit better. Uh, when it comes to the, these power lines, uh, I, I honestly, I'm not sure uh, what you, uh, because you need to firstly, uh, I guess, uh, classify the points or something like this. There are some models that can do for you all those things like classification of the point clouds. Uh, I'm not sure what would be the, the source of data and information for you because uh, you need to know the trees, uh, what, are, uh, what are points related to, to trees in those point clouds. At the same time, you need to be careful about uh, uh, also the source of the point clouds. Are they, uh, you mentioned like terrestrial scannings, but uh, also you can use drones. This can all, all impact the results, I would say, because you, you may have more points. Uh, and yeah, you need to be kind of careful about uh, several things. Uh, and, and also the size of the final voxel space that you are got, going to get. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think um, at the moment, I'm not so sure What's your intention? Are you are you going to use a uh, uh, multiple sources or just the one type of laser scanning, like mobile laser laser scanning, or you you need to combine the the airborne laser scan data with mobile laser scan data for three models? Or you just combine. Uh, I yeah, go ahead. Elsa, um. oh, well, Cynthia, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, because I, I, I'm not so sure. I don't know. Uh, I can see that you, you didn't really give a clear indication, but you did mention that 
um, use laser scanning or even photogrammetry. And so in, in your next step, maybe we we just try one type of laser scanning data or something. What What's your plan for next step? Probably I can show something. If you stop sharing, I can share what we have for the, for the campus. Um, yeah. So this is what we have for uh, our campus. And it is from terrestrial laser scanner. And these are, you see, even if it is from terrestrial laser scanner, these quite big trees in front of the uh, building, they're also, yeah, not badly represented. Uh, oh, Is this the voxels? Sorry? The, these are voxels. These are voxels, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And these are voxels 20 centimeters. So you see this, they're even represented as uh, voxels. Of, uh, so I think even from ground, you can collect quite a lot of information about um, the trees. And I think at this moment is not that critical for him to try to see, to combine many different data sets, but just go from, yes, even he can start with his trees probably. Yeah, I guess that's, that's And this is, idea. these circles you. here is exactly, are exactly where the, the uh, scanning um, instrument was placed. So okay. you see from four points, you can get quite a good information about the trees. Yeah. Okay, so that's just from TIS, fixed location. Yeah, from fixed location, exactly. I think, um, so can can Han get this data, the laser scanning data for the- Yeah, 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 yeah. we have this yeah. data. Yeah, I think, okay, so that, that's good. You can have a play, so at least to start with uh, um, creating the voxels. Even you can get the point cloud and try to use different voxel size to see what is happening and to try to make some experiments. Yeah, I would advise to, to specify a few analyses that you want to do and see how the, the size is impacting those analyses. Yeah, exactly. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> May I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. I, I'm curious uh, about in, uh, I will ask two questions. First, uh, for the trees, most of the time you want to have some inventory of trees for most applications. And one of the features or characteristics that you want to know, at least in large areas or even urban areas, is the health of a tree. I mean, uh, we may know the, the position of the trunk, as Cici said, you may have the, the height, you may have the, the width of the crown. But okay, in some cases, if you are uh, creating an inventory of trees, you may also need the health. What it means is if you're relying on photographs and you are, you are relying on laser scanning, uh, are you considering within your research or what you find so far, if that uh, sole information can be retrieved? Because uh, if you have, I, I imagine, if you are relying on photographs for a healthy tree, but that tree, maybe you know the species, but you don't know, uh, it has no leaves, maybe it's dead. So with that information, information or workflow that you propose, it's possible to have something about it? Oh. Um, sorry, I didn't have take out the question, <laughs> may I ask you to yeah. repeat the question again? I am interested in the health of the tree. Yeah. Basically, I want to know if a tree is dead or not. If it's dead, it may or may not have leaves. But uh, the, the point is, it's a really important uh, feature. The, the thing is that you say that you rely on photographs, and AI to extract the species. So what happens if you 
have a lot of species which are dead or a lot of trees which are dead. Could you identify them properly uh, with what you have found so far? Uh, um, you mean identify tree species from photograph? Not the species, whether some tree is dead or, li or in, uh, is um, active, <laughs> how to yeah, say. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. If you don't have the leaves, can you detect the species? Um, or I mean, it's just a it's a loophole. How do you get out of that? Oh, I haven't. Seen. Yeah, I think it's hard. Uh, you're right. It's it's not easy to to specify if if that tree already dead or if it's uh, um it the leaves are gone just in the in the winter time it will regrow in spring. We don't know. Um, if, yeah, if that can happen just in the winter time. I'm asking because, for example, uh, one typical problem if you have a big natural area, you want to know where are the dead trees, maybe mm -hmm. not the species, but where they are, because that will make us a fire later on on the on the dry season. So it, the species is important because some some trees are really dangerous to cut. So you have to take some precautions to cut them. So some other species are just really easy to cut. They, they have no danger. They propose no danger. So I mean, it's I know that you didn't show something, but I am curious if you have found something about it. Yeah, there are some researches about how to detect the hair stay condition of trees. Um, yeah, I have seen some of these, but because this is out of my literature, out of the scope of my literature review, so I didn't uh, see some very carefully. So I, I cannot. I, I yeah, can so imagine I, that you need to have also some other type of sensors, not uh, that can give information about something within the structure of the tree. The the if the trees are dead but still have some kind of leaves to be able to distinguish from the uh, what's that the 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 greenery that the tree is dead mm. yeah the, the, the color yeah. of the leaves uh, if it's ten brown <laughs> not green <Yeah. laughs> uh, something like that i believe <laughs> um, but yeah, i don't yeah. think just from the laser scanning can uh, you can get whether the tree is dead, not at all even. Of course, if you scan when it's supposed to have leaves and it doesn't have leaf, okay, it's dead, apparently. But <laughs> <laughs> for the rest, uh, it must be some sensors. Uh, this is really kind of, I can imagine this is a big research for um, wood producers like in Canada and probably also in Mexico or in Finland where yeah this is a production so you have to be able to identify how much wood you are going to receive from a specific patch with trees and then it's important to know whether what is the health of this uh, patch with trees and uh, so they should grow to be able to become <laughs> to be more profitable for you, but uh, yeah, indeed, Han was not considering this as okay. part of his research, yeah. That's okay, don't worry, I'm yeah, just curious. You just need to put this in the, in the research limitation or the scope, um, because I, I don't think you can resolve this within your uh, research. Me neither. Yeah, it's already quite enough to have only the the trees and to try to estimate how it influences and the CO2 for climate change. Uh, that's quite a lot of work. Mm. OK, so do we have more questions or we can conclude this session? All good. Uh, All good. Yeah, nice very, presentation, good. Huh? very nice presentation indeed huh? very well prepared and structured and you also presented it is very clear yeah thank you okay
You're all right. Welcome. Thank you all. And I think uh, Han, uh, have a try. And if you need the data, maybe contact medical CC. Yeah. yeah. And then you can have a try, have a go with the point cloud data now. Yes. All right. OK. OK. Thank, Thank you. you, everybody. Very good. Bye. Thanks, everyone. See you Bye. next time after two weeks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a good day.